Every fall, downtown St. Pete comes alive with the Tampa Bay Times Reading Festival. But you can find connections to our rich literary history anytime, as ELA specialist Chastity Downing found out. We're here at the St. Petersburg Museum of History. It's a real gem in our downtown St. Petersburg area. It's not only great for students and families to visit, but it's also a great connection to our history classrooms as well as our reading language arts classrooms. I'm here today with the executive director, Mr. Frias, who is not only a part of the St. Pete Museum, but also a teacher at St. Petersburg High School. Could you tell us how this wonderful museum connects to not only your history classes, but also literacy? This, uh, this museum offers a great opportunity to learn not just Florida history and St. Petersburg history, but a lot of the elements that made up that incredible history. So we've been working to put together um, some teaching curriculum that, that teachers can use in the classroom, both electronically and on paper, um, that'll help the students not just learn about history, but also the literacy part of it and learning about their state that they live in, the city that they live in. Could you tell us just a little bit more about the curriculum you're putting together for the classrooms? Absolutely. We, we're in the process now of rebuilding our main gallery, which is a 3,000 square foot gallery that pretty much tells the history of St. Petersburg. And what we're changing it to is to be more of a Florida history gallery and how St. Petersburg played a part in the growth of Florida. So we're breaking that up into about nine or ten different elements, different themes, and, and we're building the curriculum so it matches Florida history curriculum for the students in Pinellas County. Could you tell our viewers what families could expect if they come down to visit the museum? All kinds of things. Um, people are shocked when they come in and they see the world's largest collection of autographed baseballs. We have an exhibit called Schrader's Little Cooperstown, which houses nearly 5,000 autographed baseballs. Not just baseball players, but celebrities, politicians, important people in history. The exhibit teaches history using baseball. Then they see our 3,000-year-old Egyptian mummy and can't figure out why there's a mummy in St. Petersburg, so we love telling that story as well. And we have a number of traveling exhibits. Great. And being a teacher, what would you say is the most valuable part in connecting your history classrooms with our language arts reading classrooms? What can students take away if they come to visit with that connection between our two curriculums? I think that they'll, they'll see, they'll read, they'll understand um, a little bit better of the place that they live in and, and, and how Florida came to be. Um, it'll, get, it'll trigger, I think it'll trigger some opportunities for them to do a little bit more research. Um, we have a great archives department that is open to the public that students uh, that I bring to the museum are able to do some research and find all kinds of great things about their neighborhood, their homes, their families. Um, so there's a lot of learning opportunity here that isn't just a historic you know, look and see type thing. So as you can see, there's a great connection to history and literacy. I'm Chastity Downing. We'll see you next time. When Literosity returns, we will see the connection with Star Wars and literacy.